Hi, and welcome to video 23 in the Ableton Tips and Tricks video series. Today I am going to show and demonstrate grouping and color coding tracks. Now I understand this is extremely basic. This is something that I forgot to cover in an earlier video. So for that, I apologize. Uh, I didn't think it was that important, but I've realized the more I've done this series that yes, it actually is very important for the purpose of speeding your workflow and being organized. So what you see in front of me are 16 tracks and they are for tracking a band. So let's say I wanted to track a band in Ableton for whatever reason, difficult, but possible. What I have is what you should see on 16 tracks. I have a kick, snare, three toms, a hi-hat, two overheads, and then some other electronic elements. I've got a pad, uh, two synths, a bass, a piano, lead vocal, backing vocal, and then a room mic. But you'll notice that it is all the same color and it's pretty hard to discern what is what. So what I'm going to do first is actually color code them to give me an idea of how it would look. The way I color code in any workstation I'm working in is what I call the rainbow color scheme. And I just go from red to violet. And I've had this for the last few years I've worked with live. And I've standardized all my projects to have the exact same color scheme. So anytime I open it up, I know that you know red is drums, orange is bass, green are synths, etc. So let me show you. What I'm going to do is select kick, hold down shift, click overhead two, all the drums are highlighted, right click, and select red. So all of them are now red. The pad I'm going to color pink, bass is going to be orange, piano is going to be yellow, two synths are going to be green, both vocals are going to be violet or purple, doesn't matter. And then the room mic, I'm going to leave white. So look at that. Much more discernible, much more distinct. But what do we do now? Let's say I've recorded everything, but I want to start mixing. And I want to cut the size down, and I want to group it, make it a little bit more easier to look at. What I can do is grouping. To do so, I'm going to select kick, hold down shift, and then what I'm going to do is press command G, and you'll see this bar that's highlighted extending all the way to overhead two. That means it's been grouped. You'll also notice because it says one group. I can also toggle the arrow to collapse and expand. But what I'm going to do is rename it drums, all capitals. Then what I'm going to do, right click and make it red. And I can collapse that. I'm going to keep pad, bass, and piano ungrouped because for this, it's only one instrument. It doesn't have to be grouped. I do the same for synths, select, command G, Command R, since, right click, make it green, and collapse. Same for vocals. I can also right click, group checks, and then make it violet. Let me rename that Vox. And now we are ready to go. And look at that, it's all collapsed and it's ready to be worked with. Now the other reason this workflow is really nice is because what you can do is actually progress from one element to the other. So let's say you want to work with drums first. You can get all the drums arranged as you want. You can move all the faders as necessary. Once it's all done, you can group it into one fader. So once you've got the drums perfect in your eyes, you can use this fader and it moves the entire drum group as one. I should also point out, these faders do not move when this fader is moving or you're automating. What I mean is that the drum group, once mixed or recorded, it moves as one cohesive group in one track, which is really, really nice. The same applies to synths. Once I have their levels correct and their sound correct, I can group it, collapse it, 
and then mix it accordingly with one fader, which is really nice. Vocals are subjective because some people prefer to leave the lead vocal alone or on a separate track, not in a group. I'm one of those people, and I did it for this demonstration. Uh, for lead vocals, I do recommend keeping it on its own and not in a group because that next to percussion is what is going to push the track forward. You generally want that up front, and you want it to really shine in comparison to other elements. So that is the end of this video. I apologize again that this is late, but you can probably now see how important it is to color code and group your tracks. The last thing I will leave you with is standardize the colors. Just have a color scheme either written down or mentally noted inside your head and standardize that for every single track you're working on or have done. Because once you do that, you can start opening up your old sessions if you want to go back to them and you know that certain colors mean this and then other colors mean that. You do that, you'll get more organized and your workflow will become more streamlined. So that concludes this video. Take care and thanks for watching.